Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, well, Krista Burns, here at the <laughs> Nebraska Library Commission. Got a mouse going across the table here. Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we are our online show, webinar, webcast. Um, we're here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. However, we do record the show every week, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always just go to our website, and I will um, show you that uh, at the end of the show today, um, and you can see all of our recordings there. Um, if we have any slides like we have here or any websites people go to, we include that in all of our recordings as well, so that will be available to you as well after the show. Um, both the show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So if you see any topics that you may think may be of interest to any of your colleagues who weren't here today or haven't seen the show, uh, friends, neighbors, anybody who's interested in anything, send them to our website, have them check out what our upcoming shows are and our recordings. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, book reviews, mini training sessions, uh, interviews, basically anything library related, uh, we have it on the show. Um, that's really our only criteria, something having to do with libraries, so pretty broad. <laughs> Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that uh, do presentations, and we have guest speakers, and today we have a mixture of that. <laughs> um, together with today with us, all the way over to the left, is Erin uh, Willis, who is from our uh, Lincoln City Libraries just up the street, uh, the Jane Pope Getsky Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors, and Lisa Kelly, who's from here at the Library Commission, our Director of Information Services. And they're going to talk about, we had Erin on early, uh, previously, a month or so um, ago? Exactly, about yeah, a month about ago. A month. Mm -hmm. Talking about the new Nebraska 150 Books program, um, but we're going to get dive more into that today, and specifically how you can use that with your book groups. So um, I'll hand it over to you guys to take it away and tell us everything you want to tell us about Nebraska 150 Books. Um, good morning. I'm hopeful that Erin can, Aaron can recap some of the session from last month talking about um, what she and many people did in determining a list of 150 books for the sesquicentennial. So, yes, certainly. <laughs> um, well, I'll just start from the beginning that um, the Oops. Nebraska Nebraska is celebrating 150 years of statehood on March 1st, 2017. And so we initiated in early 2016 a community, statewide community re reading initiative um, in partnership with the Nebraska 150 Commission. And our initiative is called Nebraska 150 Books. And we're celebrating the sesquicentennial through literature. And the idea um, and uh, impetus behind the program was to come up with a list of books that represented Nebraska history, culture, geography, um, just represented Nebraska as a whole in scope. And so the committee, um, there's a committee of individuals um, in the library world, in the reading world, in the bookstore world, um, teachers, um, we all got together and developed a reading list um, that was then sent to community members for vetting and um, to determine the final list of books. So on the Nebraska 150 Books website, you can see a complete list of 150 books to read for the sesquicentennial, and, um, and then a shorter list um, that's part of our reading challenge. Um, and these are just, um, these are books that have, that have been narrowed down so that there's um, one book from each of four different categories, um, which is, Fiction, nonfiction, young adult, and poetry. And so one book from each category each month um, that we're focusing on, and that's uh, what comprises the short list. And so today what we're going to talk about um, are some of the books from uh, both of those lists, the short list and the long list. Um, and we're talking specifically about books that are available through the Library Commission in their um, library reading, um, is it the book club, book club collection? Book, co book club collection. Um, and to talk about why these were chosen and why they um, would be good choices for your reading groups. And I just want to say, if you did want to, we did, I did briefly say you were on previously. I looked it up just to make sure. August 17th, so just last month, um, Aaron was on talking. So if you want to know more about all those titles and, and uh, that were um, selected and the, the um, the top list and everything. Um, we've got that recording on our website, and I'll show it that where that is um, to you at the um, end of today's show as well. And I apologize that we're going a little out of order, so I hope you don't mind. We're just going to wing it. Um, when you want to, if you would like to choose a book from the Nebraska 150 list for your book club to read, 
you could go to the Library Commission's webpage and up here is search box. If you search book club kits, our uh, IT people have verified that you will find it any number of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are, those are the results. And you'll get to our book club kit page. And Vern has made a criteria for Nebraska 150 books. Now we don't have all of them, but we do have about a third of them in various um, numbers. So let's just do that. <clears throat> book club kits and book club kits from the Nebraska Library Commission. And here are the 150. Now some we don't have many copies of but we're working on it and so these um, these would be some of the titles that we have and the number of copies that we have and for any one that you want just press request this kit and it will remind you how many copies we have and it will be sent to a staff member here who will get back with you and um, let you know if that will work for your book club and the sesquicentennial is not until next year officially, so we have time to get more yes, copies of this. So right, it's a work right. in progress that is as correct. of today. <laughs> That's correct. We've been working with local bookstores and um, all sorts of people to gather titles. So, um, so these titles, I think what we want to feature today is what would make them good for your group? Why do we think we, you should pick these titles for your book group? Um, obviously, there's as Aaron has indicated, there's a variety of titles that it's not, it's fiction, nonfiction, young adult, short stories, poetry, memoir. Don't feel that there isn't something that would fit your group for your book club. And you might want to choose two or three throughout the year. Probably these are going to be some new titles for your readers. And maybe there might be a possibility for an author visit. Some of these authors are really gung ho to visit, some more than others, but I've known of some that are really. Um, agreeable to visiting and I've had a local author come to my book club and boy did that make a lot of difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's I um, authors are more accessible than you might think and uh -huh. they do enjoy opportunities to um, share about their books and to learn what other people uh, have to say about their books so that's certainly who was the author you had visit your um, we have we've had a couple um karen shoemaker has mm -hmm. visited one of our book groups mm -hmm. and then um i'll talk about this a little bit more later but we're having um Ledette Randolph is coming to the library in December and she's bringing with her a number of authors who are represented mm -hmm. on the on the book list um so I'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about she a different came to my book group too she's excellent yes <laughs> she's yeah. really a lovely lovely woman um so the criteria and Erin can speak more about this right so there are two sets of criteria the first set of criteria is what makes uh, someone a Nebraska author and this is the criteria we use at the Jane Popgeski Heritage Room of Nebraska Author to determine who um, is collected in, um, in, in our Nebraska Authors Collection. The first criteria is that an author was either born or grew up in Nebraska. Um, second is that the author was educated in Nebraska. So a lot of times um, if somebody was at the university for a long time um, mm -hmm. or if they um, spent their summers here and then taught school here, which is the case with one of our authors <laughs> who I'll tell you about. Um, so and the third one is then that Nebraska authors um, must have spent their productive writing years here. So they must meet one one of these criteria. And sometimes we um, make an exception for somebody who <laughs> might have um, who might have have a combination of, <laughs> of these um, these criteria. So this is our Nebraska author criteria. And then uh, the Nebraska book criteria is um, that books need to be about Nebraska or have a Nebraska setting that they'll be available in libraries or bookstores. And that is a, that's mm. a difficult one because a lot of the books that are so representative of the Nebraska history are not in print anymore. And so we had to um, not choose some books that might have been a good pick for the list because um, people would not be able to access them easily. And so we had to make sure that they're available. We used OCA or um, the OCLC uh, website to, to mm -hmm. learn that. So it, it's possible that they might be out of print, but we have verified that they're in enough libraries in mm -hmm. Nebraska that you can still right. access the book. So in some cases, you might not be able to purchase mm -hmm. it from Amazon, but there sh should be an option to borrow it from interlibrary loan or from mm -hmm. the library commission. 
or, um, or just borrow from your library. And the third criteria is that the titles will reflect a variety of work that have appealed to Nebraskans <laughs> over time. Um, and so this one, um, I, I think it would be easy to put all of Willow Cather's books on the list, <laughs> but, um, but we did want to have a greater scope for the list um, and to have books that represent uh, geographically, um, uh, with, with the um, understanding the unique geography, the types of people, uh, the age groups, and um, the time in history, really. We, we wanted to have a great scope for all those things. So um, so that's the Nebraska book criteria. So for the, the short list, um, for the books that we're really focusing on, they, the books had to meet the criteria for both a Nebraska author and a Nebraska book. And then uh, for books on the longer list, we are, um, we've made an exception and said that if it has a Nebraska theme but wasn't necessarily written by a Nebraska author, it can still be included on the list. <laughs> or um, other, you know, um, on the other side, if it was written by a Nebraska author but doesn't have an overt Nebraska theme, we were still, mm -hmm. uh, we still included it on the list. So um, those are the criteria for the, for the books that made the short list and the long list. And there and are the URLs. That's where you can find them. So <coughs> Nebraska150books.org um, will tell you everything you need to know about the the initiative as a whole. And then you should be able to click on that and go to it if you want to show it. Um, I think, is it a help? Yeah, it's a really it's a pretty easy website to navigate. Um, there's not too much superfluous information there. Pretty much just what you need, um, who we are, what the books are, and ways that you can participate in the reading challenge. And then these are our sponsors at the very bottom. We are sponsored by a grant from Humanities Nebraska, and um, they are paying for uh, Nebraska book materials, bookmarks, posters, reading challenge entry forms, things like that to be mailed to libraries. So if you would like any of that information, we can send those to you. And that is um, an initiative supported by Humanities Nebraska. And then to learn more about the NLHA, which is the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association, the organization um, that initiated this program, you can learn more from that link. And then we are um, the endorsed book list for the Nebraska 150 um, celebration. And so you can learn more about uh, Nebraska 150 from that, uh, that link. Excellent. Okay. And while we're here, we, we oh. could just go, um, if you want to go back to the website, we can just show you how to get straight to the book. So if you go to the Nebraska Books um, tab right there, and then go just go down to the Nebraska Sesquicentennial Book List, click on that. Um, that's how you can find your downloadable list of books. You can also see it embedded. Um, you can either print it from that downloadable list, or you can see it embedded below. And then the short list um, is on a separate tab, but that's how you can learn more about the books. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, let's get to the books. Erin and I each selected books that we've read recently, maybe not so recently, but it, um, they come from the long list and they come from the short list. So, sometimes just one of us has read the book, sometimes both of us have read the book. So mm -hmm. we'll both be contributing to some and maybe not to others, but we're starting it off with a very, very popular book. Eleanor and Park, if you haven't read this book, you've probably at least heard about it. This um, is likely the most popular book to have come out of Nebraska in a long time uh, by Rainbow Rowell. Um, this was uh, this came out in 2013 and immediately um, made every bestseller list, made every best of reading list um, in 2013-2014. In Nebraska, um, it was the Omaha Reads pick for 2015. And um, so we're, we're all becoming more aware of, um, of Eleanor and Park in this state. Um, it is targeted to a young adult audience, but it resonates uh, really with readers, adult readers as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a story that takes place in the late 1980s with um, two high school students, uh, Eleanor and Park. <laughs> and um, it's told in a dual, uh, dual narrative literary form. So you have the perspective of both Eleanor and Park and um, their perspectives on their environment and their relationship. Um, some of the themes um, are considered more adult, and in fact, um, there was some controversy about this book. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about this. It's a high school in Minnesota, Anoka mm. High School, challenged the book's placement um, in school libraries. Um, a parent group called it uh, called it vile profanity because of the crude language, and there is uh, quite a bit of language. I think it is representative of the way kids talk, but it, it's, mm -hmm. it is in there. And um, they, <laughs> the group that 
um, objected to the book cited 227 instances of coarse language <laughs> and sexuality, and that's why they demanded it be pulled from the shelves. Um, and the district responded to that by um, pulling uh, the author, Rainbow Rowell, from a presentation that they had scheduled for her. And so if anything makes a book more popular, it's a good controversy. Uh -huh. So um, the book was popular before that, but then um, it really uh, launched in a big way after that controversy. And the, the irony of that, uh, that whole incident was that it happened during Banned Books Week, which I think is uh, perfect. <laughs> I think perfect is, um, timing. Hilarious, but um, so um, other themes to recognize in this book are um, poverty. There's a um, kind of a sad storyline with Eleanor's family that also includes domestic abuse, um, and then there are some body issue uh, themes and also themes of bullying and just assimilation in a high school environment. So those are those are the takeaways and some discussion points if you choose to have this for your book group. Is there anything you want to add to that? We had a small staff discussion, <clears throat> including Susan, who wrote about this for her Friday Reads. And it is, um, for me, it's a, it's a really a soulful book, but soul-crushing book. There's oh, that's a good way to describe it. It was like, hard. It's um, it's tough, and it's not your, you know, I, she might be a modern Judy Bloom. She might be someone mm -hmm. who I'd put in that camp, perhaps. I'm not sure. She takes in a modern, more modern setting, and it's mm -hmm. set in Omaha as well, is it? It is. Know? Oh, it, Omaha plays um largely into that, and um, without naming specifically, you know, <laughs> the yeah. exact neighborhood. She. She was very careful to um, to not uh, smirch the Omaha neighborhoods, but mm -hmm. she, I, most people will recognize yes. the places and things who and are that, familiar with Omaha. To me, that makes the book more interesting. Also, we, it, they're one of our authors, and then it's our setting as well, and sometimes mm -hmm. that brings it home in a different way as well. I hadn't noticed this on the book, because you've got that link to Susan's review that right. links to the blog posts that yeah. we're doing on Fridays night. Our staff okay. once a week blog about a book, mm -hmm. and when it overlaps our book club collection, I include their and review. The so every Friday okay. on our website, there's mm -hmm. a staff review for a book. Not just Nebraska books. Those are anything. can be anything. We're all over the board here. Susan, Susan read a lot of, our staff member Susan, who is our overdrive person, among other things, she's read a lot of Rainbow Rowell books now. Mm -hmm. And so. She, and most of, I will say most of Rainbow Rowell books have a, a pretty, well, not most of them, a couple of them have a Nebraska theme. And I yes. think that's mm -hmm. um, something people from Nebraska really um, can attach to their oh, yeah. environment. And I mean, most people can attach to her. The, the character-driven uh, parts of her novels, but certainly if you're from Nebraska, you can also connect to um, the place, and, mm -hmm. um, which makes the book more meaningful. So she does a good job of that. I think so. And I, again, I would recommend this for adults and young adults. Yes, certainly. Don't let the audience make you think as though Harry Potter were for kids. <laughs> right, I'd put it right. in that camp. And especially, I, I grew up um, and went to school in the 1980s, and so the book, having taken place in 1986, <laughs> 87, I think, it um, it really brings you back. I mean, the references to music and um, clothes, you know, everything um, is kind of period. So anyone who's been through the 80s will really, <laughs> really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, this book is going to get more attention. I can tell you now that our eight copies are reserved through to the end of the year. They're mm -hmm. very popular. If you want mm -hmm. to res reserve our eight copies... It'll be next year sometime. So that's how popular this is. And don't let that squelch your request, but uh, know that this is going to have a lot of time in popularity, I think. Okay, this is another one of yours. Mm -hmm. This is the book that I referenced earlier, A Different Plane, <laughs> which is um, edited by Lydette Randolph. It's actually a collection of short stories from Nebraska authors, contemporary mm -hmm. Nebraska authors. And Lydette Randolph. Um, I'll just tell you to save the date right now. Lynette uh, Randolph is going to be at Lincoln Libraries for the John H. Ames Reading Series. Um, that's a, a reading series that's been going on for the last 20 years, and it allows authors to share work in progress and um, read from books that they've published. And so Lynette Randolph will be talking um, with authors represented in this book, A Different Plane. And so the authors who will be there are Timothy Shaffert, um, who's also on the list with his book, um, The Swan Gondola, Jonas Agee, who also has books on the list, Brent Spencer, Karen Shoemaker, whose book we'll talk about a little bit later, and Anna Minardo. So they'll be uh, part of the Ames reading series on Sunday, October 23rd um, at Bennett Martin Public Library. So <laughs> thanks for letting me put that little, little plug in there. But um, I also want to just um, talk about this book 
as a, um, a perspective for Nebraska literature. Most of, um, most of the people represented in this book are renowned authors. Um, you would probably recognize, recognize names like um, Tom McNeil, Kent mm -hmm. Harris, mm -hmm. uh, Ron Hansen, Dan Schoen, Mary Piper wrote the introduction. Um, so these are all uh, people who are known worldwide for their literature, and they really bring a sense of Nebraska, I feel like, to the world. And so this book is just a collection of short stories by the authors that I mentioned and um, other authors as well. And so to read this book, you have a, um, a better context for understanding Nebraska authors um, in company <laughs> with each other. Um, so if you, this might be a good first read if you don't quite know what direction to go. Mm -hmm. If your book club wants to, you know, have a small sample of all the Nebraska authors, you can you can read this and um, and kind of figure out who which author resonates most with your group and which um, which kind of, which next mm -hmm. book to pursue. This is a great starting point for that. Um, <clears throat> I'll share one little um, one little brief. Uh, snippet from the Scots Bluff Herald by Bart Shanneman. This was just published last week um, when he was reviewing the Nebraska 150 book list, and this is what he said about uh, a different plane. I picked up a different plane, contemporary Nebraska fiction writers, from the Scots Bluff, Scots Bluff Library and have found it to be diverse and wide-ranging about the entire body of Nebraska literature. The stories in the book span the country by writers with voices that are as diverse as this nation built by immigrants. Um, so that's an endorsement if I ever heard one. <laughs> so, um, if, do you have anything to add about this book or as I've authors? given it as gifts. <laughs> I love the cover. I really love the cover of this, and I think mm -hmm. that because um, I've ridden in that truck. You really have. <laughs> I mean, I know just know how that feels. To <laughs> like, you know, I think I, my parents are from the Sand Hills, and I just think that really does evoke Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And I've read some of the authors from within, but not this, mm -hmm. not their. And there is a counterpart of this book. This is Nebraska um, fiction writers, and then Lodette Randolph edited a book called The Big Empty, which is mm. on the long list of Nebraska, um, the Nebraska 150 long list. And The Big Empty is contemporary Nebraska nonfiction writers. Oh. So that's also another one, another good one to check mm. out if you, um, right. if you want to learn more about the nonfiction authors <clears throat> from Nebraska. Okay. I chose uh, to review The Middle of Everywhere, uh, Mary Piper's book, The Middle of Everywhere, and some of you may recall that Mary attended NLA in Grand Island after she wrote this book. It is about Lincoln, Nebraska being a refugee relocation center, and as I, I read it some time ago, but have have recommended it many, many times, and it is nonfiction, and I think maybe a lot of book groups might read fiction this would be a great opportunity to widen your horizon. Um, Mary Pfeiffer lives in Lincoln with her husband, and he is her booking agent. His name is Jim, and she, I think she's done a lot of readings here in Lincoln. She's yeah. very available. Um, I love having one of our own. I like knowing one of our <laughs> own has wrote, has written the book that we're going to discuss. And But the element of refugees right now in our political climate, I feel like is more at a pitched fever than it's ever been before. Yes. And it occurred to me as I was rereading and refamiliarizing myself with the book that this might bring out real politics in your book group in a way that perhaps your group has not explored those avenues before. And having that's come up in my book group, and it can be difficult to navigate that. So I don't want you to not consider this for your book group, but I definitely want to give you a caveat that it could unearth some issues that perhaps you didn't know about the folks in your book group. But what Mary Piper does really well is describe the cultural brokering, and that is her language for taking people from another country, introducing them to Lincoln, Nebraska, which is a 180 from where they've come from, I remember an example of junk mail coming to a refugee's home, credit card applications, and they took them seriously. Oh, oh. gosh. Right. So when you think mm -hmm. of another culture, mm -hmm. you uh, anything that you wouldn't consider being a, a roadblock might very well be. Something they're not familiar with. Exactly. Yeah. So junk mail was something she had to teach them about as a cultural broker. Little things like that that we grow up knowing mm -hmm. how to navigate, another culture would not. 
teaching them how to drive, teaching mm -hmm. them, oh my goodness, she's quite a woman. I, I, I've read other books of hers, probably three or four other books of hers. And this is this the only one of hers on the list, or um, this yes, this is the only one on the list. People would probably be most familiar with *Reviving Ophelia*, which mm -hmm. came, which was her um, breakout book, and it was on adolescent eating, girls and um, eating disorders. Yes, that all of those things wrapped into the you know, yeah. what um, the development of um, girls. But this is the only one uh, that was relevant to. To Nebraska specifically, so that's mm -hmm. the one that is on the list, even though it's not the most popular, but um, certainly the most relevant. If you haven't familiarized yourself with Mary, this would be the time to do that. She's worth getting to know, and um, I couldn't recommend this book more highly. I still stand by it. Mm -hmm. I still think it's worthy for a book group to read and discuss. Certainly. I think from an awareness perspective, too, she's very, um, I mean, the politics are part of it, but also just you will see people standing on a street corner not knowing what to do. And to, she's trying to evoke in mm -hmm. people that sense of awareness that we live in a culture where there are non-native people or there are displaced people living among us and they mm -hmm. don't always know uh, what to do. They don't know um, food, exam for example, was one thing she <laughs> she talked about. They, they'll mm -hmm. put the, their milk in the cupboard and their canned food in the refrigerator. They don't really, they mm -hmm. don't have that natural understanding of, or, you know, that, that, understanding that we've grown up with and just to mm -hmm. have an awareness of that and to um, and to have some compassion and um, patience and then also to try and go out of your way to really mm -hmm. um, to really make this transition more comfortable for these people. From the latest census in the city of Lincoln, 258,000 people, 19,000 or 7.4 percent are foreign born. That's wow. a large that's a big <laughs> number. That's a, and that and that was in 2011. Mm -hmm. So things have changed in the last five years, I'm certain. But Omaha and Lincoln continue to be refugee relocation centers. And when I looked at data on the internet, there was very pointed political discussion about Lincoln and Omaha being political. And I mm -hmm. the URLs would indicate whose political side they were mm -hmm. announcing that okay. with. And there was a lot of... Um, unpopular opinion about that on the internet. So as I say, this would certainly bring up timely topics, even though it was written a while ago. So it is, um, this I will say is our featured book for September. So every book or every month, as I mentioned, we feature four different books and this is our nonfiction feature this month, um, partly because of its uh, timeliness. Also where um, the governor's lecture in the humanities is um, is later this month, and that's something you can find on the Humanities Nebraska website. But the Governor's Lecture on Humanities this month is about um, immigration and displacement and um, and the crisis that we face in, mm -hmm. in dealing with that and our, in our inability to um, agree on the best practices for, for that. So um, we, we're focusing on mm. this book, um, and then I'll, you know, I'll talk more about the, the fiction choice for this month as well, but um, this is certainly something that's relevant, and I think even though this book is specific to Lincoln, the theme's going to be applied anywhere. I mean, yes. there are, um, this is not just a Lincoln, Nebraska um, issue. It can be applied to any yeah. situation. So. And as you can see, we do have 14 copies of this. It's been around for a while. It still continues to check out here, but also recommended by ALA as an outstanding book for the college bound. So they're giving it their blessing as well. Good Night Nebraska by Tom McNeil, for which we have 10 copies of. You were going to talk about this one, but I've read this book also, so go ahead. Yeah, and... I'll, I'll just um, start a little bit and say this is one of the authors uh, for whom we made an exception for the Nebraska author. <laughs> um, we do consider him a Nebraska author, but in fact, um, he really only spent boyhoods um, in Nebraska. He spent time on uh, the farm where his mother was born and raised, and then later in his life he taught school um, in rural Nebraska. Um, he spends most of his time in California, and you'll notice there's a kind of a California theme in this book. Um, one of the characters goes to California for a time. Um, so he's, he spent um, most of his time in, in California as a youth, but um, his summers were spent on his grandparents' ranch in the Panhandle. Um, so the one thing that Tom McNeil has said about Nebraska, and Tom McNeil is a, a 
especially famous author right now, his book Far, Far Away, um, a young adult book or youth book, uh, was just published two years ago and was just a huge success. Mm -hmm. And um, so Good Night Nebraska is one of his earlier books. It was published in 1999, but he's really uh, becoming relevant in a big way right now. And so um, so I'll just um, quote him from a, a night, or 2011 interview with the New York Times um, and their question about why he focuses so much on Nebraska. And Tom McNeil said, for me, it represents a type of purity that is hard to come by. So to think that we live in, <laughs> um, for somebody from Nebraska, or from California, who spends the summers in Nebraska and thinks of this as a, a you know, a type of a place with a purity about it is really, um, <laughs> it's really interesting. Um, but what, <laughs> the funny thing to me is that that, um, that statement does not come through in the book. I don't know mm -hmm. if you <laughs> if you thought in the book that it was there was any kind of purity that you thought in the Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, so this book is it's really uh, the classic anti-hero in the in the main character who is Randall Hunsicker, um, and it starts out um, when he's age 17 and his father dies unexpected, unexpectedly and then he, um, he really messes up. Um, he has kind of a crazy sister and a crazy mother and he ends up, sh and this is, <laughs> this, it's kind of a crazy book. He shoots his mother's boyfriend, steals a car and crashes and comes close to killing himself. Um, and he is going to be sent to reform school, um, and he has this uh, this option um, to to move to a town, a fictional town called Goodnight, Nebraska. And there are theories on which town that mm -hmm. actually is. I won't I won't say here because I'm not. Um, people do not agree on which town it actually is, <laughs> but there are theories about which town this is based on. But this town, um, Goodnight, is a fictional town in the book. Um, and it's um, a place that Randall Hunziker calls Sludgeville. He is not happy there, but mm -hmm. he later um, begins to think of it as his home, and um, he really becomes a part of the community, although he doesn't, I don't feel like, ever become a really virtuous character. Um, mm -hmm. he, seems to, he seems to struggle throughout the book, um, and I mean, there, the discussion on that is probably a nature versus nurture. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there are all kinds of things um, to consider in what makes Randall the kind of person he is. Um, and uh, fortune uh, befalls him. He has captured the heart of the town's sweetheart, Marcy, and they get married and they have all kinds of trials and ups and downs. And, um, and then uh, a, an ultimate conflict, um, which causes her to move away and then move back and, um, and then have a relationship uh, recovers from that and so it's a book about I feel I feel like it is equally character centered mm -hmm. plot centered and place centered I mean I think mm -hmm. this is one of those rare books that you really have a lot of everything <laughs> and um, in Nebraska as a place really features prominently in this mm -hmm. and um, and then also Randall as a person and then there's just a lot of conflict in the book as well. So did you? My takeaway from this, and I read it a long time ago, was that he really could write women. I um, agree. I yes. remember thinking, I kept looking at the front thinking, this is a male author. And boy, do I take note of that because I've been um, preparing for a program on women authors and becoming more mindful of, well, what's the difference? What am I reading for? Mm -hmm. And he was one for whom the female characters I felt were intimately described. I I agree, especially in the person of Marcy, mm -hmm. who um who has to deal with Randall and the way that she, the emotions that she goes through in um, yeah. dealing with him and then leaving him and then ultimately coming back to him and the process. I mean, he really describes well the yeah. um, the emotional process. That that for was me, for her. that list is small of male authors who really do justice to the female characters. <laughs> I um, agree. I can think of three only, and he's one. So um, I love that you say it's character, mm -hmm. setting, and story, really an equal combination. It makes a lot of lists when we're um, trying to work on notable books around here for the Center mm -hmm. for the Book, so don't let the copyright take you away on this one. He's an author you, you all might want to become more familiar with. Ah, Local Wonders. What a great book. 
We read this for my book group. Was this one of yours or one of mine? This is, I think this is one of yours, although this is one of the runaway favorite books. Um, there wasn't a negative vote for this book on yeah. the list. It was really, um, really well received by everyone. I have traveled to Ireland a number of times and I have given my tour guides this book because it's mm -hmm. from Southeast Nebraska. Mm -hmm. I feel this really is a little piece of my hometown when I'm traveling in Ireland. Some parts of our geography are familiar, but how could anyone not love Ted, who's described <laughs> himself, and I've heard him speak, he describes himself as a hobbit, um, because he does look like a little <laughs> like a hobbit. But my book group read this, and you can see all the accolades here. One book, one Lincoln final uh, in 2005, one book, one Nebraska in 2011, and then he, much to our great pride, Ted served as our U.S. poet, poet laureate for two years and really put poetry front and center and continues to do so in our state. I feel like he's um, such an advocate for poetry. Now, let me just say this. I don't like poetry. <laughs> and my college professors really didn't work well for me in terms of my lit classes, but Ted brought me around. So if poetry sets you off and you think, uh, why would we ever do that for our book group? I would consider his read, his writing to just be the lyrical, um, oozing with place. And I don't, I would read this again and again, and there's one of his lines for me that I used as a Christmas card. You know, if you wake up in the familiar, oh shoot, um, and you know where you are, it's local wonders. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, and I'm not quoting that exactly right, but um, he touches my sense of Nebraska, where I also didn't like living for the longest time, but now <laughs> I've come around to it, and Ted really um, can bring that home in a wonderful way. These are little essays. Um, well, I wouldn't call them poems. I wouldn't call them essays. They are short selections. Yeah, I think that's a good way of saying it. They, they have a cohesive, mm -hmm. and they're all... Um, tied together somehow, but right. it's more of a collection. It's not a, um, doesn't have a linear. No. And if you were reading this for your book group, I would encourage your readers to pick their favorite lines, their favorite paragraphs, their favorite text. And that is what I would use for the impetus of the discussion, because whatever moves someone will, move, will not move another one. Mm -hmm. And you cannot I think you cannot live in Nebraska without bringing yourself to this book at some point. I think um, that's a good way of saying it. And you, um, I think that's a good approach to reading it as well. And if you do, um, if you need a companion to this book, if you're reading this one and you do want to read some of his poetry, his book Delights and Shadows mm. is also on our short list of poetry. And um, that was a Pulitzer Prize winning um, poetry book and um, would be, a good way of um, kind of contextualizing what he's writing mm -hmm. in verse um, and what he's writing in um, in his his little essays here. Uh, you can, I mean, they're they're both very place centered and mm -hmm. um, and obviously he's very tied to uh, tied to his environment. Um, I will also say for Ted Couser that he is a champion of Nebraska authors. He is really committed to the Nebraska literary tradition, and he draws from the early um, early poets and authors uh, from Nebraska, and he's really committed to preserving their legacy. And so um, Ted Couser was one of the early, probably the the founder of the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association, mm. and he um, he was really um, significant in developing uh, the Nebraska Author Collection so that those books would be preserved and available for people to see, and um, and then ensuring its sustainability for long term with um, with the fundraisers that just support our endowment. So um, he's been a big influence in the heritage room and also is surprisingly accessible. He was, um, the first time I met him, He's um, I've met him several times now, and it's just intimidating to be in the presence of somebody whose books um, you're really inspired by. <laughs> I feel um, I'm still a little bit starstruck by authors. Um, having, having read their work and being so inspired by them, to meet them in person is really um, kind of an out-of-body experience. And for uh, meeting Ted Kuzer um, and just realizing that he's a normal person, um, was, and he really is as down-to-earth as, um, as his book is. And so... Um, I think that you really see the soul and heart of a man in this book and, um, mm -hmm. and that he's a person. So, 
And from a book club perspective, let's say your book group has just struggled through a pretty deep or a dense topic that's maybe taken a little emotional life out of you. And I've heard from a number of you, you really will want to conquer a big book. This would be a great segue, a breath. Yes, a, a breath. rest. Exactly. And it doesn't take long to read. The book itself is quite small. And we have many copies. And I think this might be a... Um, a segue from one tough book to another because mm -hmm. while this is quite stunning um, it will challenge your time in other ways I think mm -hmm. in a good way all right the meaning of names we have discussed a little bit already and you have read this and I have not so okay well this is the book to read this year I'll say that this mm -hmm. is Nebraska's one book one Nebraska book for 2016 and um, I think that the celebration of Nebraska books is in about a month so we have so October. we'll have a new book new uh, new one book one Nebraska book so um, this is very relevant right now and um, and Karen Shoemaker appears in libraries all over the state um, you can go to the um, Library Commission website to you know see when those things are happening or um, books are just the beginning is another place to go or Karen the one book on Nebraska website or um, even the, the Nebraska 150 books website has a lot of her appearances scheduled so um, if you want to hear from the author herself about her book um, there are all kinds of opportunities in the next month um, this book is also a featured book alongside Mary Pfeiffer's The Middle of Everywhere um, it's a featured book for September on the theme of immigration mm. and um, I'll do my best to uh, to talk about that here um, the so the book takes place during World War one and it's um, North Central Nebraska and uh, the towns and places are all real there are no fictionalized towns and places here you'll recognize O'Neill and the, you know you'll you'll recognize the names of towns and the locations and so um, anyone who is, is familiar with that area of Nebraska will kind of will be able to attach um, some meaningful significance to the places that she references. Um, so the book takes place uh, World War One, and um, it opens up with a, a scene from a train in which a German is riding on the train and has um, meets with an unfortunate end. <laughs> he, um, there are um, some local people who are. Uh, have strong feelings against Germans and uh, the German immigration and the, um, the Germans were living in Nebraska at the time and he ultimately is, is thrown from the train and um, if you listen to Karen Shoemaker talk about this she'll tell you a, a little bit about how she found that story she spent a lot of time in um, in the microfiche rooms looking up old newspaper articles mm. and she was kind of fascinated by the story of a man who um, just he was on a train a German man who um, had gone on a a train and disappeared and um, she doesn't know what happened um, but she kind of she drew from that story um, to, to create this uh, to create this little vignette in the book about um, what what it was like for German immigrants at the time um, with the with the attitudes in the um, local uh, aversions to immigrants at that time and so that's how it opens. Um, it's set in 1918 in a farm in a farm community, um, and it's the story really of an ordinary woman uh, who's just trying to raise her family during a really tumultuous time uh, with the war going on, and then also with disease, which is uh, where the book turns. The primary focus is on the flu epidemic that is going through, and so um, she has her own. Uh, her own kind of problems. She is estranged from her parents. She's married a man who they did not approve of, uh, Fritz, who is um, the, probably the second most significant person in the book. And um, she's confronted with a lot of um, uh, a lot of blowback from her family. And so she, it's a love, you know, love versus family and relationships and commitments and um, and there, those are all. Each one of those things are big discussion points on their own. The relationship between Gerda and her family, the relationship between Gerda and her husband Fritz, and um, and those those family dynamics. Uh, and then the second thing that um, is significant to talk about is the flu epidemic that's going through. And there's a lot to be said about the flu epidemic and um, why certain people got it and why 
um, certain people didn't get it. Strangely enough, the people who got the flu uh, and died from the flu were strong, you know, people with really good immune systems. And I won't, I, I don't know how to retell the science of that, but it affected different people differently. And there were a lot of um, there were a lot of soldiers dying. It ultimately ended the war because so many soldiers were dying from the flu. And there were very few babies born. I mean, babies were not surviving the flu epidemic. And so Gerda, the main character, um, is pregnant, and she uh, she's one of the survivors, and so is her baby. And uh, this is a true story from the author's life. Karen Shoemaker's mother uh, was the baby that's in the book. Her grandmother had a baby during the flu epidemic in which no other baby, hardly any baby survived. And so the personal influence in this book is really evident. And that's something that um, Karen is really adept um, at describing and talking uh, talking about. So, um, so some really great discussion points here on um, immigration, again, and relationships and um, war and um, just human compassion and human... Mm -hmm. um, human relationships. So uh, there are some really good discussion questions. I, I've basically just given you a rundown of the book, but I know the Library Commission has some great um, discussion questions with this kit, and then there are also discussion questions on the One Book on Nebraska website and then mm -hmm. on Karen Shoebaker's website as well. So some great places to find um, really good really good issues for uh, talking about and considering. Okay. Because I'm looking at the clock, it's just 10 till, we're going to finish up these uh, the titles that we have left. At 11 o'clock, <coughs> our new Librarian of Congress is being sworn in in Washington, and it will be on the Library of Congress YouTube channel, and uh, Aaron and I are both eager to watch that. So if you do have questions, please put them in now, because we'd like to wrap up at 11 so we can watch our new Librarian of Congress mm -hmm. being sworn in. First time a and woman. If, and if you guys want to watch it too, yeah, yeah we don't right, want right. to cut into your time. Yeah. First time a woman, first <laughs> I'm a librarian, so we're very excited. First time an African American uh, will be leading that organization. So um, I'm going to switch to. We did have one comment from the beginning that oh, I just wanted to pass okay, on to yes, was that um, when you were showing about our um, the book club kits and everything, yes. so I wanted to say thank you very much for adding the browse feature of the oh, 150 books. Excellent. I remember when you were here before, so I wanted to ask about that, and I said, I know there's some way to do it, and I didn't scroll down and see that it yeah. had been created as a separate click here to automatically yes. look up, you know, limit it to all of those in our book club kits. So. Great. And nice I wanted, addition to that, yeah. I wanted to say, even though we have 100 copies, they are busy, busy, busy. <laughs> if you can't, if your book well circulated, yeah, well, yeah, if your book group can't read it this year, please don't be discouraged. Um, they are really popular because this is the year people are trying to read it. Don't mm -hmm. think that just because you don't read it this year, it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Um, those of you who grew up with public television in Nebraska, and I remember visiting my grandma in Bassett, she had two channels, ETV and 1011, and um, I had a weird relationship with ETV for a long time because I just thought it was the rural station <laughs> for the longest time, but Ron Hull, born in 1930, my goodness, he's quite a storyteller and he's got a story to tell. He um, he was born in a house of ill repute in South Dakota, <laughs> but adopted by a really stand-up family. And his story of adoption is part of his recollection. Um, and his lifelong struggle, am I good enough? Why did they get rid of me? I've talked to many adopted people. And his story resonates with other stories that I've heard. Uh, I was part of the group that helped give this the nonfiction award. Um, and so it's readable. I would call it a creative nonfiction. I would call it just a, uh, a delight to get to know. Some people are burdened with telling their life story. Ron's is worth getting to know. He's worked in Vietnam, helping to set up their television stations. He's on the board at PBS. In fact, I asked my neighbor, he still has an office at ETV, and at age 86, is not stopping anytime soon. <laughs> so um, I would just point this out as a biography that is worth um, spending some time with for a person that you may or may not know. Ron's got great stories to tell. He was great friends with Mari Sandoz and John Nyhart mm -hmm. and brought those two, I think, to attention they may not have had in terms of being champions of literature. So I don't, I'm not going to go on any more about this. We only have three copies of this, but we, I helped give this a nonfiction autobiography award. He's a great writer, and I think his stories are worth your book group encountering. So, 
All right, I'll try to be brief on this one, even though Ron Hansen is my very favorite author of all time. <laughs> um, Ron Hansen, uh, this is probably his least uh, famous book. It's one of the earlier books he wrote, 1988. Um, books that you would probably, you would know um, by him are Atticus. That was a, um, a nominee for the National Book Award. Uh, the one that most people recognize is The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford because mm. of the movie that was uh, made from that book. Nice. So um, those are two of his familiar titles. This is a book um, of short stories, early short stories. And the reason this one is relevant to our list, uh, you can tell from the title, it's called Nebraska <laughs> Stories. <laughs> and actually it's only, it's there are 11 stories in the book, only six of them take place in Nebraska. But the, the six that take place in Nebraska are really, uh, are really significant um, to our history and our landscape. The one that is most popular and really might be the best short story ever written. I'll just say, if, you know, if you pick up this book for no other reason, um, just check it out and read the uh, read the book, or I mean, read the first short story in it. It's called Wickedness, and this is about the blizzard of night or of 1888. Um, it's a really famous blizzard, January 1888. Um, and I'll read just a little bit. It, uh, it says the weather was pure wickedness, and the story is a collage of small stories. It opens on a train where a young teacher on her way to Nebraska shares a ride with a poor carpenter who lost his limbs and ears to frostbite. Mm. It continues with uh, a variety of happy and sad um, stories. My, my favorite one was about um, a pony that's in charge of delivering messages to parents who didn't know where their children were. Um, mm. There were a lot of, I mean, in this blizzard, if you know mm. a little bit about the story, it was not a day that started out like it was going to be a blizzard. Kids went to school. And um, kids were on their way home from school, and the blizzard, and it was blinding blizzard, and then just feet and feet of snow, and their children were lost in the blizzard, and there was a, um, a pony in charge of delivering messages. So um, it was, it's kind of a heart, I, how did you describe it before? It's soul crushing. Soul crushing. <laughs> it's like um, uplifting and soul crushing. I mean, there's a little bit of humor, but also just, I mean, it's a tragic comedy a little bit, and um, but just a really good. Mm -hmm good one and then um there are i'll i'll talk about the the last one too just to keep it brief the last one is called nebraska and um i think there's a really good juxtaposition of um, the first one which is wickedness and then the last story in the book which is called nebraska um because the first one is about uh people needing to think and act quickly you know and to address the blizzard and to um to, to deal with it. And the last one is about uh, technology and the progression, um, time oh marching on, and um, and people wanting to kind of stand still amidst that. And so you you start out, you know, needing um, needing to think and act quickly and kind of end with really wanting things, you know, wanting to be slow and not, not progress. And so the, um, it's kind of a good bookends for the book. And then um, and then the pieces in the middle kind of fill it out. And it has really mixed reviews. Not everyone loves this book. I do. <laughs> uh, but not everyone does. And um, the general consensus seems to be these stories need to be read and talked about because the, the mm. implications and the, um, and the themes of the stories are not automatically evident. So a uh, book of short stories and uh, one that lends itself well to discussion. So that's one to check out. Dating Dead Men is a mystery written by an actress you might recognize from When Harry Met Sally, Harley Jane Kozak, who went to Lincoln High School and graduated in 1975. She won an Anthony Award for this book, um, which is a mystery award, and she's been in other movies, Parenthood, Arachnophobia. Um, she was in my television so far for Santa Barbara. You know, I think <laughs> actors who write, like Steve Martin for me, Steve Martin, one of my favorite authors, um, are kind of worth investigating. This is the first in her Wooly Shelley series. She's a greeting card writer. She's doing a dating project for a psychologist named Dr. Cookie on a book on how to avoid getting dumped all the time. Janet Ivanovich might be a... I like Janet better, but I would put this in this camp. And genre books sometimes are not selected for book clubs. Mm. But you've got a Nebraska connection here. It is set in California. But she's one of our own. Mm -hmm. And um, there would be, 
again, this might be a breath for your book group to yes, take. Yes, definitely. It's goofy. It's silly. It's slapstick. <laughs> you can imagine it as a movie. So um, here's a quick, um, this is a, a mystery, example of a mystery. In three minutes. <laughs> okay, three minutes. I'm going to just combine my last two. I'm talking about Sing Them Home, and then um, that's by Stephanie Callos. And then the last book I'm going to talk about is uh, Night of the Twisters. And I'll combine them because they're both books about tornadoes. Um, Sing Them Home is uh, an adult book. It has magical realism. Some of it's ta told from the perspective of a woman who died in a tornado. Um, it takes place in the fictional town Emlyn Springs, but it's also um, a, a fictional Nebraska town that people can relate to. And um, and it has a, that kind of um, that different approach to to the literary um, narrative, which is um, the magical realism. And then Night of the Twisters by Ivy Ruckman. Most of you will probably recognize this book. It's told from the perspective of a 12-year-old boy who survived the tornadoes, and it is a runaway favorite for the youth. And so um, so those are really, um, really good, uh, <laughs> relevant books for the summer, as the summer's wrapping up, <laughs> and, um, and also books that are Real fan favorites, just easy to read and enjoyable with um, mm. easy themes to talk about, mostly place and weather, which we all love to talk about. So um, <laughs> that's where I'm going to wrap it up for my and, books. Oh, yes. Oh, that's okay. it. Oh, yeah, I, that's it. Oh, we had one more. Okay, very good. Um, thank nice. you all. Okay. Please consider reading these books with your book group. If we've given you themes to talk mm -hmm. about, I hope we've inspired you, not limited to, but including some of these. And so we're going to go watch our new Librarian of Congress yes. being yes. born. Yes, will too. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. And right. bye-bye. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Get switched over to, there we go. Um, that will wrap it up for this week's edition of Encompass Live. Um, and borrow the keyboard here. Yep. Um, it has been recorded. It is being recorded still. <laughs> um, you can find us online, Encompass Live. All of our recordings are here on our website underneath archive sessions, underneath our upcoming shows. And the previous one that Aaron was on, as I mentioned, right here, Nebraska 150 Books, celebrating Nebraska's sesquicentennial through literature. You can go there and watch that recording. And then later this afternoon, today's recording will be here as well, along with the slides and all the different books that you guys Great. mentioned. So that'll wrap it up. Hope you join us next week. You guys can go if you want to. They're trying to get out of here. I'll wrap up this. <laughs> Um, when our topic is one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens, um, you've heard of one book programs here in Nebraska. Our uh, children's and youth uh, young adult coordinator, uh, Sally Snyder, has come up with uh, a program she's been doing for quite a few years where they, she picks a book for kids and a book for teens. She's going to be on the show with us next week to talk about that. Um, the, and joining her will also be Tom Watson, who is the author of Stick Dog, who is the one book for Nebraska Kids book this year. So definitely join us for that next week. Sign up for that show and any of our other ones. Also, we are on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, please do pop over to – somebody's still logged in here um, – Facebook and give us a like, and you will um, – get notifications of when our shows are starting, when recordings are available, all that good stuff on the Facebook page. Other than that, that wraps up for this morning. Thank you very much for attending. Um, we'll see you next time on Encompass Live, and go and watch Carla Hayden be um, sworn in. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>